Welcome to the World Builders Anvil, episode 155. Today's topic is enter the wine maid. I, <laughs> it's not the wine maid, it's the wine steward. Oh, oh. Enter the... Steward. Steward. Enter the wine steward. I, I thought we were going to go with the fate of the wine steward. <laughs> it's faded. Okay. Don't know where to start building your fantasy world? Do you need more? Does it make sense? Forget any worries and become a crafter of imagination. This is the place that will help prime your mind. Now, it's time to heat up the forge, break out the mithril ingots and hammer. Welcome to the World Builder's Anvil. I'm your host, Jeffrey W. Ingram. Let's sup from the mug of Java and build. Welcome back. As always, I'm Jeffrey W. Ingram. And I'm Michael Miller. And we are here today in the Sunny Mythology Studios in sunny Windsor, Connecticut. Uh, I actually drove through snow to get here today. It's actually still snowing right now. It's actually a really nice drive. It kind of put me put me in the Christmassy mood. All right. So there will be Christmas jingles if you wait to the end. And the important thing about that is because I'm, I'm videotaping this. Jeff thinks I, I wanted to videotape the intro. I didn't. I want to videotape a reaction to his Christmas <laughs> gift. Oh, Merry Christmas. Might be a little bit early. We're recording this before Christmas, but the audio is going up after Christmas, so. Say it's better not be Destiny. Oh, like you could hold you like you could hold your own in Destiny. I would be such a noob. Yeah, you you wouldn't be able to handle it. Towards the camera so they can see you. <laughs> It's a box. I want to thank Michael and all of the fans of the World Builders Anvil for pitching in together to get me this best movie ever. <laughs> the listeners don't know what you've opened. <laughs> it is Waterworld for the people who are listening to the podcast. Michael has bought me the scariest movie ever <laughs> scariest made. Scariest movie ever made. <laughs> there's, for those of you that are new, there's been a running gag about Waterworld for about 50 episodes now. <laughs> <laughs> I was in the store shopping for my office Secret Santa, and it was, and right, it was there. right there. And I was like, oh, I can't. I'm like, that's the perfect Christmas gift for Jeff. I'm like, I have to buy that. So that is the perfect gift for Wondrous Jeffrey and. And, and 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 many others. So if and you're many still others. looking for for gifts. So I, are we just going to put this in the group? You think? <laughs> I'm going to shut this down. Okay, Michael's. Say anything else, standing everybody. Rock on, Waterworld. Okay. Now I do want to apologize for those listening to the paper crumpling. Hopefully, it wasn't too obnoxious. Even though this is coming out for New Year's, Michael and I are ahead of schedule for some freaky reason. We will. We will. Try and get behind schedule again as soon as possible. <laughs> Did you say try to get behind schedule? <laughs> but uh, no, uh, thank you very much. It is definitely a thoughtful and appropriate kind of gift for Jeffrey. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah. Sorry, guys. Didn't mean to interrupt the flow of the show for that, but I thought it was too funny <laughs> and I couldn't resist. So, uh, Jeff gets Waterworld for Christmas. And today we're going to find out the fate of the wine steward. Yes. And if you want to go see the video of Jeffrey being embarrassed, I think we're just going to put that in the Undercroft group. Yeah. Do you want me to? Do you want me to put it up uh, like today or? Uh, wait for Christmas. I think. Yeah. Okay. It'll be like a a week ahead preview. Of what's That's coming. true. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so um, so in or around Christmas, and uh, all right now. Okay, where we left off. If you've missed any episodes so far, he's been having a typical wine steward kind of day in. Uh, <laughs> In uh, the Iron Age Bedrackum, uh kingdom. And uh, nothing really major has happened so far. He's kind of walked around. Uh, and some minor supply issues and stuff like that. You realize you're doing a terrible job of actually informing people who don't <laughs> know. Why don't you let them uh, know what <laughs> happened then? If the, uh, I'll, tr I'll try to be as brief as possible. It, it, we've only covered one and a half days of time. Yeah, it's the second day. It's the second day. So you have a wine bleh, you have a wine steward Emil who is the main character at a um of the of this little adventure we're doing the uh <clears throat> castle's name 
It is Tarkimi. Tarkimi. So this is in Jeff's world that will be in Jeff's second book. Uh, the city will be in the second book. The city will be in the second book. And um, uh, the wine steward woke up and he's got a locked area in the basement that are his quarters as well as the the wine that he has to care for. He wakes up and the wine is all bad. Some of the wine in the castle is missing. And the duke who is in charge of this castle will be coming today. So he runs out to get more wine and then more so shit. Sh- yeah, but more shenanigans happen along the way because some more wine that was his in town was also stolen. His friend was was beaten unconscious. Then later, that same friend's wife and daughter were murdered. We met some sort of magical guy who annihilated a couple of goats <laughs> after marrying the two goats together. They're together forever. Together forever. Uh, and when the Duke arrived, the Duke passed the responsibilities of this castle to another nobleman and the duke's like okay i'm out of here this man is now your boss he's in charge now so it's 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 been really eventful but the big thing is that some weird supernatural things are occurring um our main character emil is in trouble and has just been forcibly dismissed from his occupation which he held for like you know 20 some odd years i remember correctly he volunteered to resign yeah (laughs) volunteered he was told to volunteer or be killed so those were his choices so i call that forced into retirement okay so that's pretty much where we're at it's a more of a lead parachute he's he's (laughs) he's grabbing his belongings to leave the castle is where we where we left off yes he is uh currently down in his chambers he has uh been informed that he is no longer welcome and uh, he can get his stuff and go. He's been escorted by a guard downstairs and into the depths. Grab my belongings and leave. Okay. I'm headed towards uh, Ravens. Okay. You go over to Ravens. It's empty. Where is he? Uh, not there. You think he's in custody? I would. That that would be probably an appropriate <laughs> assumption for character to come along to. Um. What would happen in a circumstance like this because his heir has been killed? So who would take over the tavern? Uh, The tavern would technically be the property of the landowner, and it would be rented by the people who live there. Oh. Hmm. So I probably couldn't just be like, you know. You could go over and ask. I'll I'll watch it while he's gone. like you. (laughs) Lovely. I, I really have no idea what to do with him because he's been living in the castle for 30 years. Mm-hmm. It, uh, <laughs> I mean, his only, I mean, well, all right, how about this? I mean, he's, he knows everybody in town. Does he have any other friends in town? Of course he does. He's a likable guy, if I remember correctly. He is a likable guy. Um, so, uh, thinking about it intelligently. Mm-hmm. I'm using this as a means to fish, not as a means to use <laughs> use it because it's the only skill that I don't have uh, r- r- uh, recharged. So I'm recharging. So thinking about it intelligently, um, I'm just trying to come up with who would be the most likely person in town that I could stay with until I can figure out if I can get a job at the tavern. And if someone else is going to take over the tavern, maybe I can work for them. Mm. Well, I mean, the first thought would be Hamilton, but you'd probably never find him. Um Sorry. Uh, in joke. <laughs> well, that was actually done in game, though. Oh, I, I believe it. I believe it. Um, but so, but I just think it's funny. He's like, well, you know, he's a good friend of yours. You have no idea where he is. But <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Right now, um, these two were your best friend. Right. Murples probably would. Um, you're not sure you're that desperate. He is one of the most boring people alive, Mm -hmm. but in a way there could be a defense to that. Um, this is going to like bother him to look for you, you know? I don't, I don't understand. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But Murples would be a good choice. Um, uh, your goat friend. A little outside of town, but Mm -hmm. still around town. Yeah, but I mean... Am I actually friendly with him? I, I, yeah. I, I'm, I'm on good terms with him, but how much interaction over the course of the years have I actually had with him except that? Um, prob- probably, I, I would say he's probably an informant when caravans go past. He probably gets mm. messages into you and stuff like that. So probably a bit more interaction than you would expect. Okay. 
because where his uh, goat farm is ha- has a view of the actual highway that goes past the town. Okay. I'll cut this out. I don't know what the hell you're. I want you to give me the heads up where you want me to go because I don't know where to send him at this point. Okay. Like so, I was saying, do you just want me to go there as a means to push it forward? Uh, go, go, going there would probably be the more intelligent thing to do because okay, be, because you're not on the friendliest of terms with the castle at this point, and you <clears> probably <throat> want to be close but not too close. Mm. Okay. Because remember, ultimately, the reason you were playing to stay was to clear yourself, not to. I mean, part of it would be, probably be to reestablish yourself, but well, right. I mean, his thought is like, this still is my home. Yeah, you know, he's not just going to go wander off into the world like that's not his his yeah. way. Yeah, unless, but he still needs to support himself. So if he can't get a job working in the tavern or doing something, then he has to go where work is so he can live. Otherwise, on the street. Mm-hmm. So yeah. All right, so I guess I'll go see Adelburn outside of town yes. then. Okay, so you. Walk through the gate past the Benjamins. Uh, they're two brothers. There's two. They're both named Benjamins. <laughs> What's their last name? Benjamins. Oh, they're bas- so their last the names. Benjamins. The Benjamins. Yeah. And you the go- Benjamins. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, you uh, go out uh, through the gate and you actually go out the path towards the, the goat path. I've heard there's a lot of stories about those guards. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. A lot of stories. Mm-hmm. They're all about the Benjamins. Yeah. Well, and it's tough keeping up with them, you know, so. <laughs> So, uh, okay. Oh, oh, oh. I am I thought this a moment ago before we paused, and I didn't say it. Will you grant me a uh, a small thing? I want to bring the booze that I told him I would bring next time I saw him. Sure. So. Um, where do you get the booze from? I mean, I guess the, the bar. Which is closed. Do I have any money? Uh, yeah, you're actually a freeman, so you would be paid. And okay. Part of the money would go back to pay for <clears throat> renting your room. Yeah. yeah. Is there any other place in town that I could buy a couple, few, few ale, a little bit of ale, a little keg, maybe? Um, uh, there, there. Are, I would know this. Yes, yes, and I, I, I'm thinking there, there would definitely not be, um, there would not, there would not be another tavern in town. Mm-hmm. Uh. But uh, there are general some store that uh, no general store. There are there are places way too early for that. Uh, that's what I kind of figured, but I thought I'd throw it out there, um, <laughs> especially in a town this size. The, the traders do come through, but they typically stay in the street. There are people here who make their own brew, mm-hmm. so you could probably stop by and 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 pick up some home brew, which mm-hmm. is mostly what's drunk in the area. Anyway. Okay, well, whatever I need to do to. Yeah procure a little bit of brew before i go out there i do that and i want to take yep. that with me so we'll just magically yeah <clears throat> pop some brew into your no uh, no magic <laughs> <laughs> no, that, please. magic has not been kind lately we'll have none of that okay no no we'll have none of that <laughs> <laughs> you uh acquire some brew and you make your way out of the um uh, ta- uh gate gate towards past the benjamins and out towards uh, the Adelburn. Okay. okay intelligently named road and he looks like he's in the exact same spot you last saw him which is sitting out on his front porch smoking a pipe that was him coughing from the pipe yeah yeah <laughs> smoke i thought i would turn this into a musical or uh you know podcast theater <laughs> <laughs> um they knock hey don't be breaking that <laughs> i'll break that uh so go to Al- go to alburn and um uh, good morning, Adelburn. I assume it's morning. Mm. Okay. Good morning, Adelburn. Okay. Uh, good morning. I brought that ale that uh, I promised you. It's actually more than I promised him. Yeah. So, does that perk, it, perk him up a bit? Oh, his head perks up and he sort of his neck straightens out and he kind of peers at the obvious too much, uh, not like insanely too much, but like maybe a small cast. Yeah, yeah. And, um, it definitely perks him up, and he's like, then he sits back down, and his eyebrow goes up, and he's like, well, that's too much. Well, that's what I could get this morning, but I also figured I'd bring a little extra because I have a small favor to ask. I was wondering if you had a job opening, or at the very least, uh, a place that I could stay until I can find a new occupation. He slowly puts the pipe in his mouth, makes the 
sound and then blows out a full British battleship in the 1900s. <laughs> um, wow. That actually doesn't do it. I was about to say that would be like crazy tech level. For, <laughs> like, What's that magical? That, that like, that'd be like me blowing out a spaceship. <laughs> That's right. Uh, you'd have no idea. Like, what is that? That's uh, what's all these things hanging <laughs> off of it and oh, some yeah. weird stuff. Guns. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, he, um, takes a few puffs, drags, drags off of his, uh, pipe and looks up at you and like, well, could always use some help, uh, uh, herding the goats. Uh, I don't know how good you are at herding as he's sitting on his front porch and the goats sort of walk around his <laughs> yard. Well, I'll certainly do my best. Um, I definitely intend to, to pull my weight. I don't, uh, I'm not looking for a free ride. I just need, uh, somewhere to land until I can, uh, reestablish myself. Well, normally it ain't too hard to do goats, but <laughs> I'm sorry. That's the quote of the show right there. That's normally it ain't, language. it normally it ain't too hard to do goats. <laughs> that's the quote of the show right there. <laughs> uh, because they're just going to kind of sit around and walk. But uh, the problem is they eat all of the grass here, so you got to take them out into the pastures. Have you ever killed a wolf? Uh, no. You might not have to. But you might have to. Do you know how to use a sling? No. Do I know how to use any weapon? Uh, you would probably know how, you know how to use a staff. Not super efficiently, but... Mm -hmm. But I, thought we, I thought we established at some point he knew you, how to, you were it, not, was it a staff? Is that what we had A staff chose? would be the most likely weapon okay. that you would know. Um, obviously, so, a pitch fork or spear, so, so you, a could, stick. you could use <laughs> a longer one. So you can get away with... <laughs> he's, as you're he's doing a, goats. He's a very, yes, he's a very dangerous with a long pointy stick. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you, you could probably get away with like pitchforks, uh, mm. spears, stuff like that. Uh, typical... Uh, uh, peasantry type of weapons. You wouldn't yeah. know how to use a sword. You could probably handle a knife decently well. Mm -hmm. uh, you've never used a sling. That's not a, uh, a, a weapon used by most people. Can you even anymore. kill a wolf with a sling? Uh, you don't need to kill a wolf. You need to hit the wolf. And, oh, I see. Scare yeah. him away. Gotcha. Well, you could, in theory, kill the wolf with a sling most definitely. W right, but you'd have to be... This isn't, this isn't uh, you know, meant to be... This is like the weapon before the bow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, they can kill things. <clears throat> this isn't like a slingshot from the little rascals. Well, I mean, is it? Are, are you still talking no, about no. a rubber? You're talking a piece of cloth uh, and they, a rock. Yeah, a sling. Yeah, yeah. So again, I don't imagine you can put enough power into that to kill a wolf. Uh, it, hurt hurt him and scare him away. Fine, that I get. Like I said, remember this was the missile weapon of choice for many cultures early on. There's a reason they went to the bow. It's more effective at killing, mm -hmm. but it can still kill people. People, um, people, people. You got to tell the man. Okay, uh, a staff. You ever fought off a pack of wolves with a stick before? I've never been in the position to. It's not easy. You, you would rather keep them away from you. I imagine. Uh, well, you can you can definitely stay here, and we'll see. But you gotta you gotta know how to use a sling if you're gonna work here. All right, will you show me how. Yeah, sure. He okay. Up, he stands up and he kind of walks over to uh into his hut. He has an old fashioned kind of hut. Uh, where it's just this big round uh, uh, series of essentially sticks um, with some grass on the roof. Uh, he has a chair that he leaves out front of his hut. There's a fire in the middle, an opening in the top. Mm -hmm. Not They're a lot of decoration. Very basic, yeah. yeah. I mean, most people don't have beds. Most people don't have real furniture. Mm -hmm. It's amazing he has a chair. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's wealthy. Yeah, welcome to the Iron Age. Yay. I have a chair <laughs> um, and a place to stash stuff. And he goes through a bag and he pulls out a, a, a sling and, and some bullets as they're called rocks or uh, pieces of metal. Caliber. Yeah. Yeah. What? 40, 45 caliber rocks because they're bullets. Sorry. I'm confused. Like a 45 caliber. No, oh, no, I get the joke. It just was, it hurt you. Came out of so far out of nowhere that, <laughs> I didn't even know what to do with it. I was supposed to laugh there. Yeah. I didn't laugh there. 
No. I did. <laughs> I'm laughing now. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. I was laughing at my joke. That's all that matters. So, but my my thought was that might he have had like little pieces of scrap metal? No, no, no. These okay. are these are very. Uh, uh, a bullet is a very. It's a polished uh, polished very, stone. Very defined shape, so it travels well through the air. It's a bit pointed as it's going to hit, not super, but it can crack a skull. Okay. Not wonderful, but it's better than nothing. It's the weapon of a shepherd or a goat herder. Okay. So he he walks out and and he 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 sort of whirls one around and he essentially nails you know a the top of a stone on the little stone wall that would go mm-hmm. around where his sheep are at. Okay. So I imagine we practice for a bit and I either get better or not. <laughs> yeah. Um, the the first one pretty much goes way off to the side and you probably get, you get better as he yells at you and tells you how to release over time. You start, it's going to take you a little can, while to can, become proficient. Can we be drinking while this occurs? <laughs> well, what else would you be doing? Okay. <laughs> You're standing around. He actually, you go out with him into the field that day and, um, and he just kind of shows you how your herd goes, which isn't really. It's kind of like, it's not rocket science. Just <laughs> you kind of walk, walk around them, <laughs> walk around them, and they kind of go in the direction you want them to. He kind of warns you to keep them away from hills. There aren't a lot of hills in this area specifically. Mm-hmm. You're just out of the hills, so that it's really kind of a pointless. There's like one hill that you're nowhere close to, but mm-hmm. he's like they're hard to follow up hills, and you're like, wow, I'm ever with goats in hills. This would be great to know <laughs> because they can pretty much scale it. Uh, Pretty sheer rock where you can't. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and you start coming back. As you come, as you're coming back in with him, you actually see a series of soldiers coming out of the gate past the Benjamins, um, um, out, out the gate. You can so we can actually see the gate from his place. Oh, it's pretty flat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, typically. It's like, there's town. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. He's a stone's throw. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> um, so, soldiers coming out. Yep. Yeah, soldiers coming out. Love. With spears. With spears? Yeah. Well, soldier stuff, yeah. I mean, would they, no- would they normally be walking around with spears? Um, the, the gate guards would typically have spears. Right. Uh, normally, the other soldiers walking around town probably would not. Unless they're doing something. Well, that's my point. Yeah. Is this this my point? Is this would raise a little suspect? Yeah. Okay. Great. I, look, I don't know what to do. So okay, just wait for it. <laughs> okay. And as you guys get back and start getting them back into the pen, uh, the the stoned area, and uh, the guards come walk or. These are soldiers, not guards. They're so I don't know these guys. No. Oh, oh, I see. I thought maybe these were guards that I knew that, no. so I could like talk to them. These well, are some well, of the I'll, new guys. I'll, I'll, I'll give you, give, give you the skivvy or whatever. These are these are the new councmen, Count Terrence. Got, yeah, got that. Um, you do not know these guys, um, and maybe they're walking around to make a show of force. It, it could be that you've heard of such things happening. Um, but either way, it's not something common. Typically, and it typically seems the, the Duke would never allow that to happen unless, like, he was sending troops out to arrest someone. Mm-hmm. Um, you've heard of other lords who are jerks, who sort of their guys always have weapons, and mm-hmm. it's sort of a reminder to the rabble, the hoily polloi, that they're hoily. <laughs> hoily polloi. <laughs> okay. They stop about 20 feet and just staring. Like sort of at the edge of the stone wall in front of Is the this house. like um are we still in the morning or have we gotten into the afternoon at this point? This is late afternoon. Okay. Good evening, gentlemen. They're just standing there. I'm looking over at Adelburn, kinda like what the heck? What's going on? He looks confused, kinda like you as I Is it just how many soldiers is it? Uh just four. Four. And there's nobody else, just four soldiers. Just four soldiers. And they're just standing at the gate. They Oh, at the gate they didn't come over to us? What well, no I would only have said something to them if they had come gate, over to us. The gate is wrong. It is the edge of the stone wall um around his house with Okay, country. so they are like on the edge of his property. The, on not, the edge of his yeah, property. Gotcha. 
And they're just standing there looking. They're not talking. And they appear aware of you. Like, they kind of look at you when you speak, but they do not respond. And Alburn kind of like, yeah, can, can I help you? And they say nothing. Uh, I'm going to get some beer. I'm just going to sit down wherever I would have been sitting when we were drinking because mm-hmm. he's going to sit in his one chair. In so one chair, <laughs> and, and you're probably sitting somewhere is there close like, to it. Towards. Is there like a um, uh, maybe a, a, a like a, a wood block stump sort of thing? You know, like when you chop wood and you have a... Uh, Part like a part yeah, piece yeah, of lock. Like is there something? Because is there something that I could use to sit on like that? Yeah, you, like he must could, he must burn wood. Well, you could improvise a log into one. Okay, well that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Just something I can sit on, so mm-hmm. I'm not sitting on the ground. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, because you're not used to that, like the other peasants. Right. So, yeah. You've been spoiled. You should have sold your chair, but that really wasn't yours. Okay. I had a bed. Are you kidding me? <laughs> that wasn't yours. I slept in a bed. <laughs> yes, you did. There's no beds out here, Adelburn. No. <laughs> okay. Where's my bed? <laughs> he kicks dirt. You're looking at it. <laughs> nice and solid. Okay. So they, they they just sit there and you guys sort of talk and and he smokes and you do not and he coughs a few times and you do not apparently. Um and and finally it gets late and he starts going in and he sort of grabs a blanket um which you would have had one with you, you mm-hmm. know, your own. He just kind of goes in, he stokes up the fire occasionally and mm-hmm. Uh, does it again and then just kind of lays down in the middle of his hut. It's a chillier night. Mm-hmm. All right. I, I assume that I am welcome to go to do the same. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So I'm turning in then. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. These guys are going to stab us in our in the sleep, huh? <laughs> like, Wait, do they go to sleep? Once they're asleep, kill them. <laughs> so you go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> you never wake up. Story's over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah, they kill you in your sleep. <laughs> well, well, I thought you said there was going to be an option for me to leave town. Th- there was. That was the option. <laughs> them just standing there ominously. The the fact that it was the Duke's been, they wouldn't talk to you. They were waiting for you. They do. They 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 come in at night and they take their four spears and they stab the crap out of you and Adelburn. <sighs> I feel horrible now, poor Adelburn. Yeah, you, you killed my girlfriend. But why didn't they? Why, why didn't they give him the option to leave by saying, you know, you have to leave? Why? Like why? Why would? Like he's not. He would. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. Would I be intelligent enough to realize this is just a threat to leave? Uh, well, you were threatened to leave and told that you were. I was told to leave the castle. Yes, and and he kind of him and hawed when you said he can't force you to leave the town because and, you're and a y- freeman. And I still did leave town. I was outside of town. Yeah, not in his book. That's still his property. <sighs> you might have been smart enough to know that. Uh, but this is not a, an occurrence you've been through. You had a spoilingly good lord. Well, it's up to you if you want okay. to. If you want, it's no, no, no. I, I will accept it. But I know something that the audience doesn't know, and I really like that idea. <laughs> so do I. Okay. So I, well, <clears throat> what I'm going to do instead of brutally murdering your character is I'm going to have you wake up. Yeah, like <laughs> moments before, or <laughs> yeah, a spear, <laughs> try ah! your eyeball, ah! oh, crap. dodge, ah, crap. okay, you did it again. Okay. <laughs> okay, we'll try again, try it again, try it again. <laughs> okay, now uh, this, this I would like to acknowledge is what we call meta gaming. Yes, this, this is, is cheating. This is cheating. Like if you're a role play, if you're new to role playing, and you're, if you're new to being a GM or whatever, we are doing something because we know things that you guys don't, and it's something that this is a pay a payoff because, that's going to come because, down the yeah, road. It's going to come down the road, and I had an idea, and I like the idea better than killing Michael's character, which is unusual. Yeah, but- I, shockingly, <laughs> shockingly unusual. Like normally, Jeff r- revels in killing my characters. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I'll, I'll tell you what. Since you're going to let this guy live, I'll make a few that we can just. <laughs> You can just slide. burn through them. We'll go. We'll do a short adventure where I run the whole team, and you can just kill everybody as, as oh, it goes. The intro music will be. This is not an exit. Right? Oh, excellent, excellent. Okay, so I wake up sometime in the night. I assume you wake up sometime in the night. You hear the guards. I can hear them talking. You can hear them talking. They're like, you think they're asleep yet? Yeah, let's just go kill them. <laughs> yeah, that's that's probably what you'd wake up to hear. Yeah. 
Uh, but the thing is, he would probably try to keep Adelburn alive. There's four trained soldiers who are talking about coming to murder you guys. You guys. But that's my point. You figure, because you're intelligent enough. Fair enough. And you burn off your intelligence. Okay, fair enough. That, it, that they really just want that me. They want to kill you for some reason, probably because of the count. Mm. And Albert's just going to get because Coll- collateral damage. Yeah, he's yeah. he's in the wrong hut at the wrong time. Okay, well, can or I? Really is is, is the hut in a fashion where I can like TP style? I can creep under the edge of it. You 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 could not, but it's large enough that you could probably roll out of the light and sort of push your way through because it's not densely packed Mm -hmm. it is a little smelly because they do use dung to seal them that's fine but um that probably wouldn't bother you over death no it wouldn't all right and at this point it probably doesn't smell anymore so okay uh yeah yeah grab my bag and my my (laughs) blanket and creep my way through and haul the heck out of there i'm just running i mean off stay off the road but once i'm out of eyeline the road's gonna be faster Okay, now this is one of the things that you might think about as you sort of slip out the back of the hut, which mm-hmm. is not hard. This is not like – so you cut through the back of the hut. Not really cut. You kind of force, push, yeah, push. push your way through. And as you get ready to run, you realize if the guards go into the hut to kill the both of you and you're not there, they might they they might just kill him anyway because this whole new count does not seem like he cares much about the peasantry. So if they kill the wrong guy out of anger, uh, it might be fine. But there's also th- – there's that part of you, and I don't know how much duty you have to other peasants, and there's part of you that is utterly afraid for your life. I know. Well, well so here's my move. I'm going to get far away, like a really good length away, but still shouting distance. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> – uh, I'm gonna, <laughs> and I'm just gonna yell something like, "The count will never find me." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay. That way, they'll want to come after me, but I'm far enough away that I, I, I believe that I can run and hide. Okay, you know, because it's dark at this point. Yes. So yes, hiding should be easy right now. Yeah. yeah. So, um, that way, hopefully, they'll just come down the road for me and leave Adelburner alone, and okay. he will get to live. Now, there are two choices for your character's path at this point. Okay. Um, so I'm assuming that I get to live through this little escape through this little escape okay. portion here. And um you you can head north sort of towards Klein Forest out of the the Duke's land. Mm-hmm. You can there's not a lot of cover for a while. You have to probably hustle it. You're not far from the edge of the Duke's land though. Mm-hmm. Um they probably will not follow you off the Duke's land. They definitely will not follow you to another city. Klein Forest is probably your best choice to go hide. Where could I go where I would then be actually on my old Duke's property? You would have to go completely on the opposite side of town. Mm -hmm. Uh, I mean, you could obviously probably do a really big loop. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, (laughs) not doing straight. Well, if you turn around and go straight down the road. (laughs) Melnaris is is his prime estate, and that is to the south and a little bit to the east, or as they would say in Betrachum, to the east and south, mm-hmm. because east is more. Well, then that would be my eventual goal. Okay. So right now would be let's stay alive, and then you know if I have to, you know, do whatever I can to get a caravan and tr- do some traveling to work my way around back to wherever the Duke you is. Do, you do have some resources in Claim Forest, so you, your goal would probably maybe be to go. There, for, that would be a good first, first place. Because okay. survivability, that is by far the smartest Well, then, then do that. And you can take a private caravan to Melnaris from there. Okay. Okay. Then that's it. And is that it? That's going to be it. That's going to be it. Client Forest is a, uh, a venture into itself. <laughs> Email lives to see another day. <laughs> and I know that's a weird sounding name. So just if you guys happen to ever see it in print, it's spelled E-M-I-L. Now, you do have to love the subtleness of their, uh, we're just going to stand here and wait for you to go to sleep. And if you had lived in a land with a, a lord like him, you would have, you would have never gone into that hut. <laughs> but. Well, that's, I the, think that. The duke that you lived with pretty much your whole life. Yeah. You've never seen anything like this before. You yeah. would have never even. I mean, don't get me wrong. That probably would have me, not occurred to you. Me, and that was me playing the character. Yeah. Me as a player. 
I see guards coming out, just the fact that they're armed. Maybe they've heard of wolves in the area. Maybe they're out here to protect the farm. But the fact that they didn't say anything when when spoken to, like that, if, if they're going to be fr- suspicious, yeah, I would immediately. I'd be like, gotta go. <laughs> nice seeing you, Haddleburn. I gotta get to my aunts in five towns away. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so one of the takeaways I I got from you from this. So this uh, I want to just the, remind everybody. Yeah. So uh, this was both for your guys' entertainment and ours, but mostly so that Jeff could test things in his world. This was his idea to have me play a character and play in an area that's in one of his books. Yeah. But he wanted to test out mo- mostly some characters. Characters and location. Okay. Um, so now you so you get into so so in a way I got to flesh out this location a bit more than it has been. Which was good because one of the things I got from Michael, and tell me if I'm wrong, was you thought it was much smaller than the what I gave you the impression. Of. I would say that I still don't have a solid idea of what the size of the town is well, and, I, the, and I the general shape. I literally told shape. you in the last session. You just didn't listen. Well, it's like a block, right? Well, that's what I keep saying. There, there, there's a. You said well, you, a, you said a, there were between a, 100 and 200 families. So yeah. th- that was telling. Yeah. Like that's a good detail. Yeah. Like, that gives me an idea yeah. of how much structures there have to be for people to all be living and sleeping there at night. And um, and one of the things, too, was I, I wanted to create the dichotomy of the farmer versus the town, where the town itself is relatively newer. This is sort of an architectural renaissance period, mm-hmm. uh, going away from a society where the majority of people live in these round huts with, with uh, hardened dirt floors with a fire in the middle. And... And they use excrement and stuff to seal it up to make it waterproof. And then sort of grass like you would see in like a lot of English cottages even today was, is, was a very old roof style. Um, but they're, they're now moving into these more wooden structures, which is kind of expensive in the area you're in because there aren't a lot of trees. So most of that wood has to be imported. Um, but Melnaris would be where that was at. And so that's the Duke kind of, you know, taking care of his people really. Um, the irony is if you go to most other duchies at this point, um, and I don't, there's been no reason for you to know this in game. That is a w- weirdness. Um, most of the lands are still these round huts. Mm-hmm. Uh, the fact the farm animals were not in the town was also telling. That's, that's something new changing. Um, keeping the animals out of town, keeping the animals outside of town. Um, normally there would be a big, square but it kind of filled in as the town grew and it was sort of a natural evolution because it's sort of a, a little city outside of a castle at this point very little you know probably maybe a thousand people at the most but mm-hmm. um and like i said mostly agricultural people so they're going out to the fields but for protection they would live in enclaves with a castle and um they go out to their jobs you know uh there are still a few huts outside but not many um, typically it's the free landowner out there. And that's also new because, um, um, uh, until recently it's not been safe enough <laughs> hmm. to consider having your home outside of a compound with a few other people to help protect you, you know, because you don't really owe much. It's not like, you know, the thief skills going to be out there stealing from farmer, uh, uh, Adelburn, you know, because, right. uh, uh-huh. Get the chair. Yeah, steal the chair. <laughs> <laughs> and he's not the chair. <laughs> um, so, and that's one of the things, and, and that was partially, I, I, I didn't spend much time describing the town to you when you started. So, but that's something I have to keep in mind in the book is to make sure that people understand that there's essentially one main road that comes into the town from the Grand Knights Highway. And then along the front of the castle is where there's any types of shops. There is no general store, but there's a magic shop, which is very unusual. Um, uh, there's a bar and uh, a few other specialty types of places. This might be a good opportunity for you to make a map. I know you're a fan. Oh, oh there, you could, you could, will be maps. you could include a map in the book. Yeah. Oh, there, there will be maps in all of the books. Um, now the first book will contain a map and there will be posters, I think, too, uh, which will show the actual, the areas of Melnaris sort of, I think Klein Forest might be in it at the top. Um, but, uh, Tar Kimi is a bit further to the south. Uh, and that's kind of near the edge of the Duke's lands. And then, um, 
you can go further south. Can do we get to know what happened with uh, Ravens and his family? Yes. So what happened? Um. Well, it's not a major. It, it, it's actually backstory for book two, so it's not. It's not major. Okay. Um. He was executed for killing his family. Okay. But what actually happened to the family? Um, or can you not tell me? That I don't, I don't want to get into. Okay. All right. I understand. Because, but that, Even though that's the most interesting detail. But the, uh, the characters in book two uh, specifically think the new wine steward is behind it. And that is one of the things that they keep trying to deal with in book two. Mm-hmm. But they, they're they kids, so they, they don't really know how to so, outthink him. I'm having a fun moment here because I thought you chose the character for me to play as the wine steward um, just because it, w- it was not a very significant uh, player. And you just said, OK, well, I'll choose this guy and I'll, I'll have something happen and we can run around the town, blah, 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 blah. You chose him because the big bad or at least a minor bad is the new wine steward. So you're like, well, I need to replace the old one. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I like yeah. it though. That's cool. And, and and I wanted to deal a bit with the backstory of Ravens. Um, I wanted to get into that a little bit. Unfortunately, and I kind of blame myself for this. I didn't. Spend yeah, a we lot didn't of, spend a lot of time with him. Didn't a lot. Of, did, didn't spend a lot of time even prepping it. Um. Uh. So. So I. I kind of did a, a a poor job there, but uh, I had a lot of fun doing it. Uh, if I do one of these again, and I'm sure I will. Um. Uh, it will be a, a much more thought out story. Uh, and Michael and I were talking about it too. And we think if we do it again, we're going to get away from some of the typical things that happen in role playing games that need to happen that you shouldn't really do if you're storytelling to an audience at the same time. It just becomes a bit boring. Yeah. Like, and, and I, uh, it actually, uh, referenced something for Jeff and I, I hate to ref, I, I I have a we lo- don't hate the reference. Well, no, I have a love hate re- reference with love hate relationship with this reference because I have a love hate relationship with the idea of putting this reference out there because it's a fantastic reference. It's some, it's a resource and a, a piece of entertainment that I really really enjoy. But at the same time, they're doing something very similar to what we're doing or working towards. <laughs> um, don't but care. It, I'm going to say it. I yeah. think the world's big enough for both of us. Um, More so. <laughs> ta- go take a look at. Harmon Quest, mm-hmm. which is on YouTube. You can watch all, all of season one. I don't know if season two has started yet, but it's it's basically what we've done here. But they sit around and they uh in front of a but in front of a live audience, they role play out a DD uh adventure. But then is that on Nerdist? I have no idea. Okay. But but then what they do is because you're watching it, it's a visual medium. They obviously they record it and then before they put the show out for people to watch it, they put animations up of the characters while they're doing the adventure. So, you, so you'll be intercut between mm-hmm. p- five people sitting around a table, you know, also shots of the live audience watching them play and also animations of their characters interacting in the fictional world. And it's really funny. Yeah. It's very, very funny. But are they all voice actors? Um, they have different people. They have guests on okay. like all the time. So, because there's one I saw like a, a, a video I shared out recently was from this guy who who does something similar on on Nerdist, and but I thought it was interesting is like the entire the game master and all the crew are Hollywood voice, voice actors, actors. Yeah, which I'm like jeepers, that's cheating. <laughs> but th- their voices aren't as good as ours. <clears throat> well, you know, it's tough to tough to live tough up to, to this bar. Top perfection. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> With my soundboard skills. But w- what the thing that Jeff and I had talked about is that <clears throat> some of the – if we do this again, and I, and I think that we will, um, it, I assume that you will not just do it for the purpose of testing. We might actually do it just for entertainment value. Just for entertainment value. And if we're going to do that, my desire would be to anything that's annoying minutia – like me needing to shop for an item or me needing to go do this or me needing to know that like stuff. We, we shorthand that real quick and you give me the benefit of the doubt. Tell yeah. me you have the thing you need or you don't have the thing you need. We make it quick. Yeah. And, and we you saw stick- a bit of that with, with getting the beer today. Yeah. Right. And, and yeah. oh, right. And like if you watch Harmon Quest, they skip all they, they just go from big set point to big set point to big set point. Which from a storytelling standpoint, it annoys me because you can't shock people. 
uh, when you do that. But the good thing is it cuts out the boring part. So I think right. it's net good they, for this, they, for what we're doing. They, 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 uh, when, they have some stuff that we'll say are in air, on, qu- edge. Yeah. Uh, on air quotes, boring parts, which is to say there's character development parts. There are slower parts in the story. That's and, fine. And usually it's when a new character comes in. And because this is what they do when they have a guest on and they have a guest on every single episode, that guest comes for the adventure for that episode and then at the end of the episode either dies or leaves the adventure to p- possibly guest and come back again. Usually they die. I would shoot for death. <laughs> Usually <Yeah>. they do. <laughs> Usually they kill the character at the end of the episode every time yeah. something. So, or like if it comes up in the episode that is convenient for the character to die, they kill them there and then that's it. Yeah. So some people live through the whole episode and and end at the very they stop at the very end a and dragon lands and, and, and right <laughs> yeah. and at the end well it's usually not that abrupt but um <laughs> or they'll die earlier because there'll be a convenient spot for them to die and they won't spend as yeah. much time in there so that'd be kind of funny too like they're waving goodbyes or walking off into the story history and then get shot by an arrow by bandits <laughs> oh no we <laughs> wanted to see him it. again evil game masters so yeah check out Harmon quest um and we, we I, will i have to do a shout out here very soon I'm putting together for next year, <laughs> which is really like yeah, weeks from now. Yeah, well, for the time this airs, this will be the you figure the New Year's episode. Actually, yeah, it'll probably already so be, be by the, the time first, you guys listen. I think to this. it'll be the first day of the new year when this episode comes out. Uh, so very shortly, um, I'm putting together. One of my friends is going to run, and we're testing out a game uh, for for a friend of mine up in Canada, but it's called Host M. Um, H- host ho- M. Say it again. Dial M for monster. Host, Host M, M is something I don't know what that would be. I don't know. What is that a game? You were just talking about a game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, dial M for monster. It's a 50 noir storytelling system. Dial M for monster, and that's the name of the game or the system. It is. It, well, it is the. It is the game. It is the game. Is the okay. It's a right. self-contained. It's very similar to this game, but it's around 50s monster movie genre. Ooh. Uh, I like it. Well, 50s and earlier, but... Well, I know. I get it. I like that, but I like those. But uh, that'll be a lot of fun, so we'll be putting together something for that as well, too. Uh, The game developer might actually be in it if he can get to a computer, but he lives in the middle of nowhere, Ottawa. Uh, But we'll probably do something fun for that. Depending on how long it is, it might get broken up in episodes or something. I'm not sure. We'll uh, say his name. Who is that? uh, You don't have it handy? Sorry, I just put you on the spot. I thought you were. Well, would. I thought about that as I was saying it. I'm like, I should have really prepped to, to talk about him. Uh, but I, that's that's not um, uh, Todd. Yeah. Todd, uh, Todd Crapper. It is Todd Crapper. That's why I didn't want to just say it because I thought it was Todd Crapper. But like, if it's something close to Crapper and I see Todd Crapper, I'm going to sell it. All right. So I can tell you that that's definitely okay. him. So. Well, I, I just brought my last tweet. <laughs> okay. Uh, the game designer is Todd Crapper. He's from Ottawa. He's getting ready to come out with a new system, and I'll probably put a, together an interview about him specifically about his new game. But this is a game I played up at the uh, uh, Ottawa uh, Capital Gaming Convention. It was a lot of fun. Um, and, and Todd's got other products out there, too, so take a look at he's his got stuff. other products out there. I don't know about them, but this one specifically, I loved the system. It was yeah. a lot of fun. It was well thought out. And if you're really story-based, and you like monster stuff, this would be a perfect indie system to buy. Cool. All right. We so. like indie systems. Okay. Uh, I also wanted to make sure to, uh, to get a shout out to the uh, guys that have gotten really, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, <clears throat> active on the Facebook page. So, uh, Sean, Matt, um, Charles. Def- definitely Charles. Charles has been up there a lot, but also uh, Deanne Frost is up there. Christopher, uh, Monica has just joined us. Um, am I missing anyone? Did I say Matt? Yes, you did. I said Matt. So, guys, thanks Mike. so much. Yep, Mike. Small group still. I'm going to be looking to actually start growing it next year, but I, I like natural growth at the beginning. Yeah. No, I like what we got going on right now. Uh, because it's like people are getting to know each people other. People to know each other. Yeah. It, it, when you step into big groups, sometimes people are quiet. I don't. I want yeah, them yeah. to feel part of it. Yeah. Uh, so, by the time you hear this, you'll start seeing some activity in the group where I start asking people questions. So, you've probably missed that. So, Get there sooner rather than later because as I flesh out how I want the group to work with the people in the group, then I'm going to start trying to grow the group. So get there before it grows too long. It is facebook.com slash groups slash undercroft. 
And if you just go search Fantasy World Builders Undercroft or Undercroft, you should be able to find yeah. it. Yeah, World, World Builders Undercroft, you'll find it very quickly. There's yeah. like nothing else with that name. Weird. So it was, like I said, it was a great idea to name it that because it's easy to find. So is there anything else that we need to push aside to you're probably all done with your Christmas shopping by now, but well, if actually, you want to get ahead of it, a happy new year. Episode. But if you want to get ahead of it for next year, <laughs> you could go to www.gardool.com slash Amazon. It'll just take you to Amazon. Whatever you purchase from that point will help the show out. Mm-hmm. And especially buy everything you want through that link. Oh, yeah. If you're, I mean, look, if you're just buying your regular purchases some, through Amazon, pl- please, like, put, do put us in there. Yeah, but help. This is much better. Yeah, we yeah. need the help. <laughs> it'll help. It'll help. It'll help guarantee that you keep getting this lo- this fun content. I feel like, okay. I don't think that's scummy. I mean, look, we're still providing. No, no, we're I, providing. My a joke about uh, you know people do, sometimes. Oh, do undercutting charities. charities. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Don't undercut charities. Yeah. No. Don't, don't do that. All right. We love you guys. Have a happy new year. Thanks for spending it with us. Have a safe new year. And I hope you appreciate the the bit of uh, metagaming, but there was purpose behind it outside of, and it was sort of an anticlimactic end if I just murdered him in his sleep, which was what I was planning to do. And you really wanted to. I could tell, too. You're, this is going to be funny. I'm just going to stab him with spears. <laughs> it's like you would think they would be a bit more, you Do know. you know what I, f- I, I don't think I have, I've ever really gotten into is like you it, you don't only love to kill characters, but you like there to be collateral, collateral damage that is the character's fault <laughs> just for, for no other reason than to beat up on the character. And I've seen, I've, I've, no seen, I've seen you do I've that seen. a ton of times, too, and I forget that you do that, but you do. I, I don't know. Talk, oh, I, that whole family died because you <laughs> because of you, because of you and your selfish actions. You are the reason the six people died. Those six people that were helping you, you are why they're dead. Now, I, I, I can't remember anything specifically, but this must have been another game master, not me. No, it was you. Um, Definitely you. No, I, I'm talking about a specific story. Oh, you have a specific event, story? Yeah, okay. Where ahead, uh, there was a player character who was hired by uh, someone to steal a map and as reciprocity for And they were, like, I believe, forced blackmailed to do it. But as reciprocity for it, like the people who had the map stolen, like went into and like killed like his family <laughs> or her family. I don't. So they were know. forced to do this, and then on top of and that, then I killed their family. Then the, their family got killed. <laughs> yeah, nice. I let them survive. I mean, this game master. Oh, of course, you what you want this the, game master. I'm talking. About. Of course, you want them to live with the wrongs of their actions, the guilt and the pain of what they have to so, so, shoulder for the rest of their <laughs> lives. There's a cost for everything. See you next episode. Thank you so much for listening to the World Builders Anvil. We would love it if you would share the World Builders Anvil with two of your friends, and so would they. If they are unfamiliar with podcasts, then you get to introduce them to the wonderful world of podcasting by showing them Stitcher or iTunes, or, best of all, just send them to our website, www.gardul.com. That's G-A-R-D-U-L.com. Now strike, why the mithril's hot.